president after leaked audio of her making racist comments during a private conversation were made public this week. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre made it clear Biden thinks others who are also guilty of doing the same should follow suit. Here's Jean-Pierre in Tuesday's press brief. The president is glad to see that one of the participants in that conversation has resigned, uh, but they all should. He believes that they all should resign. The language that was used and tolerated during that conversation was unacceptable, and it was appalling. Uh, they should using racist remarks to describe uh, a colleague's black son. Uh, she said today she's taking a leave of absence, uh, but there are others, um, Senator Padilla, Mayor Garcetti, who have called for her to resign. Has the president followed this? Does he have a reaction to yes, what's going on? Yes, he's followed this. Uh, spoke to him about it uh, yesterday. Uh, look, the president is glad to see that one of the participants in that conversation has resigned, uh, but they all should. He believes that they all should resign. The language that was used and tolerated during that conversation was unacceptable, and it was appalling. Uh, they should all step down. And here's the difference between Democrats and, and MAGA Republicans. When a Democrat says something racist or anti-Semitic, we, we, we hold them, we hold Democrats accountable. When a MAGA Republican says something uh, racist and, or anti-Semitic, they are embraced by cheering crowds and become celebrated and sought after endorsements. Senator Tuberville, let's not forget, this just happened, uh, saying black people uh, commit crimes. Doug Mastriano attacking his opponent in Pennsylvania governor's race for sending his children to a Jewish day school. The president used to say, and, and I quote the president right now, quote, hate never goes away, it only hides. But lately, it's just one in the, it's the one in the open at these extreme MAGA rallies. It's just out, pardon me, it's just out in the open at these extreme MAGA rallies, end quote. Okay. So the IMF cut global forecast today and- Next caller. Caller with the phone number ending in 1403, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. All items, Bobby, and general public comment. Do you have three minutes and one minute for your general public comment? Go ahead. Yay! First of all, welcome Kevin Daly out to your new living hell. Congratulations. Now, Marquise Sleazy Dawson Harris Delbo. Is gonna get Madam overpriced. President, he's not speaking on any agenda item mansion. that I can tell. His overpriced mansion. Did I use bald hat? No, you didn't. Okay, so now you're going to get your multi-million dollar Crenshaw office. Let's get my hand, everybody. No, okay. Whoa, it's going to become a picket center. And it's going to be right down the street from the Jew-owned Crenshaw Mall. Marquise Harris Dawson is on the list. He may be the Antichrist. Check for the mark of the face on his ball. Mr. Spindler, if you could keep your comments to the agenda items, I think we would all appreciate it. Shame on you, evil man. Now we get to number one, the drug addict. Alcoholic Mike Mr. Spindler, drugs. this is your last warning. Keep to the agenda items, please. Oh, how about item one, sir? Is that a liquor license? Yes. Okay. So, we have a drug addict, alcoholic, pushing alcohol in the CD-11. And the lawyer's on the phone. What does he want? More DUIs and dead children on the streets. When does he want it? Now. And he bought the councilman to get it. Now, a rare shout out on the REAP program. Councilman Price, doing a good job. Three properties being emancipated off of that horrendous list. Now see, when you do a good job, the critics are here to tell you, I want to see more of that. So good job there. Now we'll get to my general public comment. 
Do I get my minute? Yes, Mr. Spindler, you get one minute for general public comment. Oh, that's good. Now we want to know 257 South Spring Street. What was the suite number of that meeting? City Watch Los Angeles. Oh, Debbie Kim, what you've done to my hero, Gil Cedillo. No, no, no. Deleting information like that. You know who's looking at us? FBI! I know, I know. Don't yell at me, sir. I'm, I'm on the phone here with the city. All right. Okay. Got a, my daddy there. Now, no, Herb Wesson. Holly Mitchell must be elected to the Board of Supervisors. No, I'm the dog-faced her blessing, the king of homelessness. Yes, I'm David Rue. He's running against Romanithia. Romanithia is a fucking cunt! Thank you. Let's move on to the next caller. The entire, council, the entire resigned council, resigned council resigned today, leaving today. only the mayor. The problems the mayor. came to light problems once 13 investigates, once investigates exposed, exposed a corruption, corruption problem corruption spanning problem several spanning years. Several Chief years. investigative reporter Chief Chelsea Brinsel is live in the newsroom with the latest on... Uh, item 31, Mr. Zuma Dog. All right, this is the bombshell issue that Zuma Dog exposed as candidate for mayor. My biggest concern as somebody who may be inheriting the city as mayor is the massive wave of lawsuits in federal court waiting to be filed over the city of Los Angeles's REAP rent escrow account program. Now, Eric Garcetti uh, stopped me on Friday after the council meeting and said, well, gee, uh, REAP is good. It cracks down on, you know, bad landlords. Yes, there are applications that are uh, positive. I'm talking about the corrupt, vindictive, retaliatory measures that REAP is taking against landlords that ends up hurting renters. Both end up losing. I see I'm short on time, but I'd like to say please go, I mean, <laughs> But the reason, the number one reason I need to be elected into office is to take back the city of this vindictive, retaliatory spirit that hurts the mom and pops. Because not only have I heard about REAP, this is being done for hotel mom and pop operators. Clean up City Hall. Thank you very Zoom much. Zoom a dog for mayor. Right, thank thank you. you. All right, Mr. Clerk, there are no speakers in the queue on this item. Would you please open the roll, close the roll, and then tabulate the vote? Ten eyes. Next item, please. Item 44, call special for... Our field trip takes us now to L.A. City Hall. Mike Fuhrer recently announced he wants to be the next mayor of L.A., but when we arrive in downtown Los Angeles, Fuhrer is the first to remind us he cannot and will not promote a political campaign while on government property. Well, the language and images Wayne Spindler used in last week's council meeting were offensive to many, but are they criminal? That is the question. Well, City Council President Herb Wesson says yes, they are. Now, 46-year-old Wayne Spindler has shown up to city council meetings for years, making polarizing remarks and at times dressing up in a KKK hood with a swastika. Last week, Spindler drew a this on his speaker card, a burning cross, a hood, and a man hanging from a tree, and appears to single out African-American City Council President Herb Wesson. Wesson, who is the council's first black president, threw Spindler out of last week's meeting and filed charges against a 46-year-old attorney, accusing him of making criminal threats. But Spindler denies that the drawings are about Wesson and claims he is not a racist. He, he takes this to be a criminal threat. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage. They don't listen to us. The only way they listen to us is if we're emphatic. When your bar association says he fights to keep immigrants from being deported, he says he is simply exercising his First Amendment rights and plans to sue the city. Now, City Council President Herb Wesson will uh, address this matter further at a press conference in front of City Hall today at 9 a.m. Live in downtown Los Angeles, I'm Darsha Phillips, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. And the actions that we see almost daily now, clearly weekly, in our nation that are products of hate speech, and this is, was an expression of that, this type of harassment, this type of sexism, 
is not protected, I would say, under the First Amendment because it leads to the types of violence that we're seeing in our country. And so while, yes, we are public officials and this is a public forum, our staff did not run for office. They have been selected by us to serve the city. And they have taken this job of public service, but they have not taken this job to be harassed, to be attacked, to be made more vulnerable in society. And this is exactly what's happening at this moment. And so uh, I would err in terms of the protection of our staff. I, I must say that on behalf of my staff, that this is not what they've signed up for. This is unacceptable. Yes, this is a public forum. Yes, there is a First Amendment. The First Amendment also includes a few other things. Freedom of association. And freedom of association is part the choice of where you choose to work who you choose to gather yourself with. And so that First Amendment has to be balanced with the other freedom of expression. And right now, we need to protect that freedom of association because that's what's happening here. And so they have as much a First Amendment right to choose where they work and to associate with their co-workers and make that choice, not to run for office, but to serve this city as the servants of us who have been elected. I don't agree with it with respect to the way they approach us electeds, but clearly, clearly, the freedom of association that the members of this staff, everybody on this floor who is not elected, has to be respected, has to be defended with the same fervor and to the same degree as those who yell from the other side of that microphone. Arnold, you signed up for general public comment in item 25. Oh, I, I thought I signed up for three items, the general public comment and uh, something uh, about a you, motion. You, you signed up for 30, but that's been continued Oh. and voted uh, on. Okay, so um, you have something about a motion for consideration. Are you just considering the motions or are you going to be reading them into the minutes I've noticed a lot of times with the motions that the city council doesn't read them into the minutes. And if you don't read them into the minutes, that means there's no record of that motion actually being passed. It's just hung up on the board over here. And if you don't read it into the minutes, then it's not a record of it. And that's a continuing problem that people don't elected officials in the county and the city have gotten away from reading motions into the record. And if you don't read them into the record, then that's why nothing is ever done. It's just any scam is a good scam. That's a really good scam. So I'd like to know that you read the motions into the minutes so that they can be considered. Now my public comment has a concern with a Sir, few things. I, I, I think that was your public comment. N no. That no, was that was your general public comment. Your next item is item 25. Oh, well, that was on the motion. I read about, talked about item 25 was a motion that you're considering. Uh, so, so, Mr. Sachs, you, you actually didn't talk about anything having to do with item 25, which is um, transfer of funds. Um, so if you want to talk substance, a oh, transfer of funds. Okay. Let's talk about a transfer of funds. So I was listening to the budget discussion, $1.2 billion in American recovery uh, plan. Uh, okay. N let me be more specific. Let's hold this time for a second. So item 25 is about a $10,000 or excuse me, $90,000 transfer of CDBG funds from dual and soul food to the HLA parking lot item. Do you want to talk about that? Parking lot items? Yeah, that's what it's about. Well, uh, you know, um, it's these transfers of funds. Everything is privately owned now. It's one sole source contract with everything. It's a ridiculous business that's going on. The legacy of the city and the county with the KKK that came into the city council so, chambers? 
I don't care. So okay. put me out of order. That's right. fine. But you still brought thank the you. KKK in here thank, back thank you. eight years ago. Thank, That's thank your you. legacy. Thank you, Mr. Sorry, you're right. I just received that. Wayne Spindler, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I looked on the Internet before today's meeting. The word DWP wasn't on the agenda. Jackie Robinson Day was and the budget was. And, and at the last minute, here we are again with another motion to go before the DWP for another rate hike. How can you run this issue behind the tail of everybody like you're doing? There is no alternative energy plan for the DWP. There is no lockbox. There's nothing to deal with this issue. And I got two members here just laughing their butts off right now because they know that this is a scam. If you look on the internet, the DWP bought a whole bunch of property in Utah. Now why are they in Utah? Because they're going to build their own wind farms. And they need to have money to generate money to build a secondary utility and then sell it back at 50 cents a kilowatt hour when we could be buying the same power for 4 to 6 cents a kilowatt hour. There is no plan. This is nothing but a scam. You want to get the $73 million, you want to get another $20 million to balance the budget on the backs of the ratepayers. What is the net result of all of this while you sit here and you laugh? It's very simple. The people who produce will leave the city. The jobs will go with them. Other cities are going to get their act together. Other states are currently doing that right now and attracting these businesses. A 27% rate hike in one year is not an answer. It's a death threat to businesses. You heard the businesses and, and Mr. Cardenas ran out of here with his tail between his legs on the boat when the, when, the, when the Budweiser people came in here and said no. He wasn't here for the vote because he didn't want to face Budweiser and vote yes for it. So he ran away. He didn't vote on the last rate hike. Vote no on this and let's have some real transparency. Thank you. Thank you. Want me to go? Okay. Yes, so uh, have to do it. Claim for damages against the county. Sorry, Catherine, I got to do it. Rampant violations of the open meeting laws in this building are just reprehensible and out of control and unbelievable. The retaliation, the discrimination that's going on by the chair and by this committee. It's just amazing. I cannot believe that people this intelligent and experienced violate the open meeting law as blatantly as the chair does. I, I'm just shocked. I've seen you, Mr. Chairman, at the MTA meetings escorting me all the way out of the train station with armed with machine gun sheriffs to threaten me. Now, I don't know what, what it is. It's, it's like, you don't want us here. We're a pain. I get that. So self-deport us from this city and this county and pay us to leave. We're open to that. We're like Donald Trump. We'll make a deal. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here. It's not personal. I understand you got business. You got backers. You got people that you got to pay. People that have been owed and paid off. I get that. We're not, we're not even going to get into that because I only got two minutes. I go to Simi Valley City Council. I get five minutes on every item. This guy's got 60 items and he gets four minutes. Something wrong, man. I don't get it. I don't get this jazz. It's just jazz. It's bull. That's what it is. And does it stop? No, it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop until somebody more powerful than you says no more. And that's going to happen because the FBI and the Department of Justice are going to step in here real soon. Next speaker, please. I'm outside City Hall right now with more protesters that are gathered in light of this meeting. Mario, what are you seeing there? Hi, Sandra. So we are just outside City Hall, and you can see the line stretches around the corner here down to Temple. And these are people, frustrated residents, many of them, who are not being allowed inside the council meeting. There's a live band here playing, and they're chanting, let us in, let us in. So I want to talk to some of the uh, people here in line. Sir, uh, tell me, why are you here today? Why did you show up? 
because this is a terrible tragedy that has polarized the LA community across the board like I haven't seen in the last 40 years. And the situation has become explosive. And if we're not careful, a spark can set off this city and blow it up. And I'm very concerned as a, as a Latino citizen that we have to slow this process down. Yeah, were you trying to get into the meeting? Surprised that you're not able to go in? Uh, we've been here since approximately 7.30. The doors are locked and they will not let us in. We want to see what's going on there. Uh, we want to ask the African-American members of the city council to tell us, as colleagues of the Latino council members, what's their view? Uh, what proceeds here? Do they need to all go? Yes or no? And I think that we should defer uh, to their opinion because we value the opinion and I think it's their place to take a firm position. The council votes to pick a new president. So all of this part of the fallout over those leaked audio tapes filled with racist remarks. We have live team coverage. Eyewitness News reporter Sid Garcia is live in Eagle Rock where protesters are demanding more council members resign. But we begin with Eyewitness News reporter Rob Hayes. He is live outside City Hall with the latest details. Rob? Yeah, those protests over council members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo continue today. Some demonstrators even tried to force their way into City Hall, but it wasn't enough to keep the council from picking a new president. Today's Los Angeles City Council chambers barren, but outside City Hall, far from it. Demonstrators calling for the council to cancel the meeting, at one point nearly breaching City Hall. LAPD adding extra officers to City Hall to secure the building. The council holding its meeting virtually when several members tested positive for COVID. Protesters wanting to shut it down completely. We say no more city business should be moving as long as Kevin DeLeon and Cedillo are on city council. Inside the council chambers, just one member, acting council president Mitch O'Farrell, nine others joining remotely, barely enough to legally convene. Ten members present and a quorum, Mr. President. Missing, now resigned Council President Nuri Martinez, along with Council Members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo. Those three heard in a leaked recording peppered with racist insults. This kid is a beat down. Like, let, me, let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. Protesters continuing their weak old demand that De Leon and Cedillo step down from the council. We need to amplify and amp up the pressure to make sure that Kevin and Gil resign today. You must resign now for the good of the city. Neither of you can make the decision that is obvious to the rest of us, which is to resign. O'Farrell echoing those calls from his council seat this morning. In order for us to fully heal, there must be full and real accountability, and that requires two additional resignations. Council members slated to choose a new president at today's meeting, and despite just under three and a half hours worth of phoned-in public comment, members were able to vote. That is a unanimous vote. Congratulations, President Council President Paul Krikorian. Council Member Paul Krikorian picked to fill the seat left vacant by Martinez. That choice not sitting well with some activists. It's a slap in the face given what was just has just happened um, with the city, former city council leadership that they're putting someone in place that's actually worse than Nuri Martinez. Now, the council did pass a motion to start the process of creating a new independent redistricting commission. That whole process, though, is expected to take at least two years. Reporting live in downtown L.A., Rob Hayes, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Rob, thank you. Meanwhile, another protest, this one near the home of council member Kevin DeLeon, calling on him to resign. Eyewitness News reporter Sid Garcia is live in Eagle Rock with that part of the story. Sid. And the protesters are not asking Kevin DeLeon or Gil Cedillo to resign. They're at demanding that both of them quit. Outside LA City Councilman Kevin DeLeon's Eagle Rock home, it's quiet. City ordinance says they have to be at least 300 feet away, the protesters, so they set up camp down the street. 
Protesters here and at City Hall and in other parts of the city, the loud and angry cries for De Leon and Gil Cedillo to resign continue. City Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez and LAUSD Superintendent Alberto Carvalho helped lead a news conference with the city's youth council. The message here, the only way for the city of Los Angeles to move forward from the scandal is for the two councilmen to step down. The resignations of the members involved will not be enough, but they are a necessary first step in the healing process for all Angelinos in Los Angeles. We can build a bridge going forward that will help to engage the youth from across this city and begin the work that will begin to tear down those historic divisive attitudes. City leaders today continued their call for Cedillo and De Leon to resign. They didn't pull any punches when it came to expressing their anger over the racist remarks they heard from the now former city council president and city council member Nuri Martinez and Cedillo and De Leon. At LA Civil Rights, you should know that we believe that Los Angeles is everyone. Interrupting the council meeting for a second week in a row. And LAPD jumping in to stop one woman from charging the council president. Marla Tay is here with what happened. Well, today was the final vote on banning homeless encampments near schools. And shortly after public comment began, chaos broke out. <laughs> For the second time in two weeks, the L.A. City Council meeting is interrupted by protesters speaking out against a measure aimed at banning homeless encampments within 500 feet of schools and daycare centers. Before the council could vote on it for a third and final time Tuesday, a woman climbed over the chamber's benches. No. Sergeants shouting obscenities at Council President Nuri Martinez. Do we have jail support for and our comrades getting arrested here? The room. LAPD officers rushed in and a recess was called. Now you have individuals actually jumping over barriers to try to attack uh, elected officials and that's just simply not going to be tolerated. Martinez, who supports the ordinance known as 4118, also got support from her colleagues. Frankly, if uh, police weren't here, I believe many others would have joined them. It's not appropriate. I've never seen anything like this before. It's, it's unbecoming. We the people have a voice. About his 4180. About his 4180. The protesters say the measure criminalizes the unhoused and say the answer is more outreach, not more homeless sweeps. We are actually causing death to the most vulnerable children that we have, which are unhoused children. The majority of the council disagrees and, in an 11 to 3 vote, passed the ban. This is an issue of restoring order. Now, LAPD reports one person was arrested, a man, not the woman who breached the bench. Also, three officers sustained minor injuries in that scuffle. Council President Nori Martinez's message to protesters, she will not legislate out of fear. I believe that they think they could just hide uh, from a community, from a people that they're supposed to be representing. Uh, the acting city council president says the charter allows the council to strip the men of their official duties but cannot force them to resign. That would require a special election. All this as we wait to see what happens next. Jose Wezar has been arrested amid a city hall corruption probe. CBS 2's Candace Crone is live outside of his office with the charges he's facing. Candace. Well, today's arrest comes after a nearly two-year federal uh, corruption probe investigation here at City Hall. Uh, Councilman uh, Jose Wezar is in custody this morning on several charges, and uh, we're expecting to learn more specifics at a news conference that will be held uh, actually this morning. I want to get you, though, to some pictures that the U.S. Attorney's Office tweeted out saying that federal agents seized approximately $129,000 in cash. During a search of his Boyle Heights home, you can see the wads of $100 bills there banded together. Now, the councilman faces charges that stem from allegations he was involved in a pay-to-play scheme. The U.S. Attorney's Office also shared this picture from a casino surveillance camera, uh, which appears to show the council member, a close aide, and two other associates gambling during an August 2016 trip. Well, according to court documents, Prosecutors allege a developer took the councilman, his former aide, and another city official on more than a dozen Las Vegas trips. Well, Weezart's home and office, as I mentioned, were raided about two years later, and our cameras were there. Take a look. He's suspected of accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars in bribes from a developer in exchange for his support of a downtown high-rise project. 
we saw has been a central focus in this federal probe of corruption and bribery at City Hall. We've got some video of him. A city council president uh, had asked, had previously asked, Weizar to no longer attend council meetings after the allegations and raid. He did comply and had not been arrested until today. Council President Nuri Martinez issued a statement which reads, while today's announcement on the arrest of council member Weizar is not unexpected, the horrendous and disgusting allegations leveled against him and others have painted a dark cloud over our city government for a long time now. Effective today, I will begin the process of removing him from office so that the good people of Council District 14 and the city of Los Angeles will be fairly and honorably represented. That is our duty and we must do it. Uh, back out here live again, the U.S. Attorney's Office as well as the FBI expected to hold a joint news conference uh, to give more details on the allegations and the charges. And uh, the former, or the, excuse me, uh, Councilman Weezar is expected to be in court later today. That is the latest at City Hall. I'm Candace Crone. Back to you. All right, Candace, thank you. City Federal Hall is just one are holding a news conference right now. Let's it's listen in to U.S. Attorney Iraq Nick Hanna. A world-renowned symbol of a great city. Unfortunately, its grand exterior has concealed a cancer, a disease of elected officials and staff members breaking a series of laws in order to line their own pockets, maintain power, and keep open a spigot of illicit bribes and other benefits. All of this comes at the expense of the city's four million well, residents. Seventeen months ago, the mentioned who simply want everyone honest and government resigned his position as city council and law-abiding businesses left, who saying simply they had a job want in the private a level sector that was just field. quote too good to pass up. Today, good morning, everyone. My judge, name is Nick Hanna. I'm the U.S. attorney here in term. Los Angeles. He's uh, ordered free on bail. I'm joined on stage here his wife posted, by Bobby Ed Morgan, seven who is the special agent in charge of the criminal division of the FBI Los Angeles field office. 49-year-old Mitch Englander was a powerful member this of the City Council. This morning, FBI special agents arrested Los Angeles LAPD City Councilman Jose Weizar and now he's looking on a federal racketeering charge federal that alleges a sweeping corruption scheme. In a scandal that the has case lays City out a sordid tale many to of how Mr. Weizar and his cronies sold themselves to the highest bidder FBI agents and in so doing sold out of the residents of this city. Weezar has not been arrested for the as past the 15 years. Mr. Weezar has represented nearly a quarter million raid. people. But now he's under arrest, and Weezar in the city's 14th the council FBI district, which includes Los Angeles, downtown I'm Los Angeles. Do that was Weezar two weeks the councilman the was taken into custody this morning when he surrendered at his home after being informed no of the charges contained in a criminal complaint. As well as Weezar, that complaint charges Mr. Weezar with conspiring to violate the federal RICO statute. Many of the by leading a criminal enterprise that engaged in a series of schemes designed to enrich himself who and other members Angeles, of the criminal conspiracy. A free trip to Las Vegas in June of the case against Mr. Weezar is laid out in a 116-page affidavit chips, that accuses him of running a pay-to-play scheme bill, in which he is in, and his associates solicited and bribes from developers for an escort. to ensure the that their project received favorable treatment during the city's approval process. Angler adding, don't Mr. Weezar was able to provide no, preferential no, treatment mention. to those who paid because much of the development the for, in recent uh, years was centered in his district. Where she basically and he that chaired the powerful the and that he planning and land use management committee put it with the help of his where family. he decided also, which projects John lived was the chief of and which projects Englander. died. He said get today that he was in Las Vegas on the weekend in question, but he says that he did not get anything free. He paid for everything, was unaware of anything illegal that went on, and he also added that he is fully cooperating with this investigation with the FBI, and he's been interviewed at least four times. Again, Englander is free to go once his wife posts his $50,000 bond. We point live from outside the Roy Ball Center in downtown LA. Dave Lopez, kick on our news. All right, Dave, thank you. The
Breaking news right now at four o'clock, a city council in collapse in the small scandal plagued city of Florence, 45 minutes south of Colorado Springs. Some breaking news into us on a story we've covered here on this show this week. Nuri Martinez, she is resigning her seat on the Los Angeles City Council after leaked audio revealed she made racist remarks about the black son of one of her now former colleagues. Martinez had stepped down from her leadership post after these comments became public, reported on by the Los Angeles Times. And it's a local controversy that went national, even reaching President Biden, who said that Martinez should step down. In a statement, she says she's had the honor of helping to uplift working communities in L.A., and is asking for space and privacy. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Oh what? Look! Ah! It's there! It's there! Oh my god, $140,000. I'm gonna tell you exactly how it. One of the neighborhoods that was talked about in the recordings is Koreatown, a diverse and densely populated community of Asian Americans, African Americans, and Latinos. KKL9's Jake Reiner is live in Koreatown now with more on the fallout there. Jake. Juan, there are two issues at play here from that leaked audio, one of them being racist remarks that they made about the majority of the people that live here in Koreatown, and the other one is the perceived unfairness of redistricting saying the quiet part out loud, it's disgraceful. Jamie Penn is the president of the Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council. She is particularly appalled at this section of the leaked audio between council member Gil Cedillo and now ex-council president Nuri Martinez. Yeah, let's go Koreatown. Yes. I see a lot of little short, dark people. Yeah, put a, put a yes. Oaxacan, yeah. Put a Oaxacan yeah. Korean. <laughs> Not even like Kevin, little ones. According to Penn, there are up to 200,000 people of Oaxacan descent who call Koreatown home. So the fact that she would, you know, target and disparage a particular set of any group is disgusting, but such a large group that makes up such a representative population of Koreatown is... It's atrocious. Also captured on the leaked audio featuring Cedillo Martinez, Councilmember Kevin DeLeon, and LA Labor Federation President Ron Herrera is a discussion on how they could redistrict Koreatown. They specifically wanted to divide Koreatown so that the renters were not in the same district. And them intentionally trying to divide that political power of the very people that they're supposed to represent is just laughing in the face of democracy. The idea is that council member Nathia Rahman, who is up for re-election in 2024, is not an asset to the Martinez Cedillo de Leon trio, according to them. And so in their minds, K-Town should be split so that Rahman isn't given the majority of voters in Koreatown. What this conversation clearly, clearly points to for me is that we need an independent redistricting commission. What was being discussed throughout that entire discussion was conversations about individual political power and how to use the redistricting process to preserve it. So Jamie Penn is among the many people that are calling for the resignation of Nuri Martinez. And she tells me that at tomorrow night's uh, Koreatown Neighborhood Council meeting, they will be uh, calling a special meeting afterwards to discuss a call for action as it relates to this. Reporting live in Koreatown, I'm Jake Reiner, KCAL 9 News. It's here. The power and speed of Frontier Fiber 5 Gig Internet. 
Um, so the former LA City Council president, Nuri Martinez. Current who, LA Council. She member. resigned. Mm -hmm. Yes, current council member because her resignation only had to do with the presidency. Mm -hmm. Well, now she just put out a statement saying that she's going to take a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. This is big news because in just a couple hours, right, mm -hmm. they're supposed to meet for the first time since the leaked audio recording. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, this morning, you know, leading up to this, there are going to be two marches. They're going to descend on City Hall for those council members' resignations. Because again, as we keep reminding people, we're not just talking about Nuri Martinez. We're talking about Kevin DeLeon and we're talking about Gil Cedillo as well. Mario Ramirez is live downtown with more this morning. Mario. That's right, and we just got some live reaction from some of the community leaders from local pastors to members of the Asian American, LGBTQ community about that leave of absence. Disappointment, they say it's just not enough and they're frustrated. I wanna just show you uh, this crowd here dispersing. They just wrapped up a news conference announcing that they are calling on the state attorney general, Rob Bonta, to launch an investigation, a civil rights investigation. Let's get to that statement from uh, council member Nuri Martinez. She writes, this has been one of the most difficult times of my life, and I recognize this is entirely of my own making. At this moment, I need to take a leave of absence and take some time to have an honest and heartfelt conversation with my family, my constituents, and community leaders. I'm so sorry to the residents of Council District 6, my colleagues, and the city of Los Angeles. And there were calls on the steps of City Hall last night with the candlelight visual. This was organized by District 9 Council Member Curran Price, calling for unity and the immediate resignations of former council president Nuri Martinez and council members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo. We should mention Ron Herrera, a voice in that leaked audio. He has since resigned from his position as president of the LA County Federation of Labor. Nuri Martinez stepping down as the council's leader. But I want to come back out here live. I have two of the uh, protesters that are going to be marching to City Hall. Veronica, you're a District 10 resident. Tell me why you came out here. Well, I came out here today and yesterday because I am a concerned citizen of District 10 and not only that, of the city of Los Angeles. I am appalled at all of the recordings. I heard every single one of the recordings that, that was released by LA Knock or whoever it was. I heard everything, not just the little snippets on the news. This is ridiculous, it is appalling. Not only does she need to, they need, everybody need, every, like my sign says, all voices on those recordings, on those audio recordings, they need to be gone. They I hear should you. have resigned on Sunday. I hear you, Veronica. That's the frustration out here. We also heard from someone who came from Orange County here to join the protest. So uh, we'll keep you posted that uh, meeting at 10 o'clock this morning, less than an hour. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Mario. Such passion, such outrage. You can track all the developments in the city council scandal at foxla.com. There you can read Martinez's full statement and hear from other city council members as well. It's all on foxla.com. should all step down. Nuri is heard in the audio describing a fellow council member's young son who was black as a quote little monkey. Though she stepped down from the presidency, she is only taking a leave of absence from her role as a council member. So there are other people in this discussion, mm -hmm. including it looks like um, Kevin DeLeon, which was a name I remembered because I had written something criticizing some policy of his. Tuesday's LA City Council meeting devolved into chaos. Tuesday's LA City Council meeting devolved into chaos. Days after an audio recording of a racist conversation between city council members leaked. In the leaked audio, then City Council President Nuri Martinez could be heard using racist language to deride Councilman Mike Bonin, a white man, and his eight-year-old black son. During Tuesday's City Council meeting, angry members of the public chanted resign now. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said Tuesday that President Biden believes all officials involved in the conversation should resign. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to your Los Angeles City Council.
Good morning. There are, a, there are a lot of people here that need to be heard today. A lot of people have come to this chamber because they need to be heard. Let's listen to the folks who came who need to be heard today. Let's listen to the folks who spent the time to come here today who need to be heard, who deserve to be heard. who have the right to have their voices heard today. That's why we're here today. We're going to hear from members of the public. We want to hear from you. Let's respect the folks who have come here today to be heard. To members of the public, this entire council is meeting today to work through these issues and let's respect people who showed up to give their voice to us.
Final Cut Pro to the next level with the ultimate bundle. Just 99 LA City Council controversy, a shocking secret recording allegedly between council members making racist remarks about a fellow member's own son. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ross Palumbo. And I'm Leslie Marine. One of the people allegedly recorded is the council's own president, Nuri Martinez. And already tonight, she is responding with an apology. But despite that, there are already calls for her to resign. Shocking audio recordings posted on Knock LA. Nuri Martinez. Allegedly catching LA City Council's first Latina president using foul language, making racially charged statements and slurs. The most striking comments surrounding Councilman Mike Bonin's two year old son. The white guy with the little black kid. Martinez saying the child was somehow acting inappropriately during the 2017 Kingdom Day parade. I was like, this kid is a beat down. Like, let me let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. There's nothing you can do to control him. And I'm just like, oh my God. Referring to a two-year-old black child as a monkey uh, has no place uh, in American politics today. Pomona College political professor Sarah Sedwani saying it is flat out wrong. Clearly, uh, our, our racist comments, um, there's no other way to to look at that. Martinez allegedly making the comments during a redistricting meeting with three other Latinos, LA Labor Federation President Ron Herrera, council members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo. The LA Times is also reporting that DeLeon referred to Bonin as a fourth black member of city council. Cedillo is also heard on the excerpts posted on Knock LA speaking about Koreatown. Yeah, that's called K-Town. Yes. Yeah, I see a lot of little short, dark people. Yeah, Koreans. Yeah. <laughs> not even like Kevin, little ones. Although CBS2 has not independently confirmed the audio's authenticity, at least two other people heard on the recordings are not denying their validity. Councilman De Leon saying there were comments made in the context of this meeting that are wholly inappropriate, and I regret appearing to condone and even contribute to certain insensitive comments made about a colleague and his family in private. I've reached out to that colleague personally. And Council President Martinez saying, in a moment of intense frustration, and anger, I let the situation get the best of me, and I hold myself accountable for these comments. For that, I am sorry. Is uh, an apology enough at this point? You know, she is the president of the LA City Council. She sets the standard for decorum of the entire city council. So I find it really problematic this this kind of language would come from her. After that language was directed at his son, Councilman Bonin, tonight saying, we are appalled, angry, and absolutely disgusted that Nuri Martinez attacked our son with horrific racist slurs. It's vile, abhorrent, and utterly disgraceful. The city council needs to remove her as council president immediately, and she needs to resign from office. Um, Should she resign? You know, that is something that I think she's she's going to have to take up. But I I, uh, I think certainly there's no place for this in, in L.A. city politics. Well, Professor Sadwani also points out the entire conversation was centered around redistricting in the city and shifting political lines while involving race. Neither Cedillo nor Herrera, by the way, have responded yet to our request for comment. Is it ethical to take free money from the government? A lot of small businesses are grappling with this question as they learn about the ERC program, which lets small business owners get up to $26,000 for each one of their W-2 employees that they had in 2020 and 2021. A lot of people haven't heard about this program and a lot of people think that all of these stimulus programs passed by the government have ended. This is not true. Unlike PPP, you can still qualify for the Employee Retention Credit Program. In fact, as of the time of making this video, there's still over $400 billion left for small businesses to claim. But you have to do it soon because your window of opportunity could pass by any time. So how does this all work? Well, the ERC program was passed back in 2020 to help business owners get money for their business for doing the right thing, like keeping their employees on payroll during all the craziness that has happened over the last two years. The rules have been loosened now and more businesses can now qualify. So around this video, there's a link. And if you tap or press that link below, 
you're gonna be taken on this new site called Financial Match, and they have a free 60 second quiz where you enter some information about yourself, your business, and then they tell you exactly how much you can get. Now there's a lot of misinformation about the Employee Retention Credit Program, and a lot of people don't actually know about this. So I wanna just go over the four main benefits quickly and tell you exactly why I chose Financial Match. So number one, you can get up to 26K for each employee. There's no cap on the amount of money that you can get. So do the math with me on this. If you had a 50 employee company, you'd be entitled to over $1.3 million. And a lot of businesses are seeing checks sent for this amount to them. Second, you get a check from the treasury. This is not a loan like the PPP program. And a lot of people think if you got PPP that you can't qualify for the employee retention program. This is not true. You get a direct check. It's not a loan. You don't have to pay anything back. Number three, you can use this money for anything. Congress didn't make any stipulations on how you use this money. You don't have to reinvest it. You don't have to pay your employees. You can use it for whatever you see fit. And number four, there's a free quiz that takes 60 seconds to complete to see if you qualify. A lot of other businesses, they make it seem like it's this long, arduous process. This is not true. You can qualify in under 60 seconds. So around this video, there's a link. And if you click or tap that button below, you're going to be taken to this new site, Financial Match. It's the best site that I personally found. I reviewed them all. They have the most professional CPAs. They give you full audit protection in the unlikely event that you do get audited. And they were able to secure the maximum ERC credit for all businesses. Check out the link down below. Take their free quiz and find out then exactly how much you can get before program funds run out or before this program is amended again and changes and something, whoever knows what could happen. Check out the link down below, guys, and see exactly how much you can get. Easy Wheels started as my college project, and we now sell our wheel covers all around the world. Easy Wheels is a brand where we collaborate with really cool brands like Disney, Barbie, Hello Kitty to design really colorful wheel covers for wheelchairs. A video that we made totally blew up and it got 3 million views in a day and 13 million views in a week. And things just explode.